Hello everyone. So today we're going to get into uh, the first of a couple videos, uh, really just kind of giving you an inkling, if you will, or an introduction to government structures that exist in the world today. Um, kind of, again, this is going to be really, really broad based. I'll get into more uh, things in class, but I think this is going to be a good primer, if you will, for the types of governments that are out there. Now, typically, most governments are, are kind of broken into three broad-based categories today. We've got a republic, which if you look on the right there, is part of the all group, which uh, falls under forms of democracy, whether they be direct or representative, although no one really has direct democracy anymore. Um, you have an oligarchy, which is typically a rule by just a few people, um, which can take a, a variety of different forms, uh, whether it's just a small group of leaders making decisions, uh, they're not really elected, uh, sometimes we can throw military juntas, which I'll discuss uh, later into that as well. Or even some people will look at the former Soviet Union or modern-day communist China as a organization that you could fall into this, you know, oligarchy. And then we have a rule by one, which is an autocracy, which you have different forms of monarchies, which I'll get into in my next video, as well as dictatorships, and basically that the, the dictatorship, that core rule by one or rule by decree. So I'm going to start with the Republic, and that's not the uh, Plato one. Um, we're not, again, talking about kind of theory. We're talking about what happened. And, and really, the group that fleshed out the Republic the most was the Romans, okay? And, and, and the Romans had many different ways in which different... Um, Economic groups were represented. Uh, there was voting. They had law codes. Um, it really was the most fleshed out and efficient of the ancient republics. And, and many, and you can argue that most modern day republics really do kind of have their bases in Rome. All right. And I'll get into again some specifics of that uh, in class, but it the Roman Republic really was representative of everything. Now, eventually got overthrown for the empire, but, you know, they had a run there. Uh, we also have ancient India, that there were some small states uh, that were often run by assemblies of free men. Um, you know, you did have areas of slaves and stuff like that, and, and women really weren't involved. Of course, women weren't involved in, in the Romans either, but um, we do have uh, some early representation there. Uh, probably one of the most significant ones was in Iceland. Uh, Iceland created the Althing in the year 930. Um, and the Althing was actually a combination of a parliament and a court. And it represented the various clans on the island. And really your kind of first modern republic style government was developed there. And on the left is the Althing building uh, from Iceland. And you also, in the Renaissance time, had the Italian republics, places like Florence um, and others that developed this representative style government. Um, not that every single group was represented, but the, the formation of the republics kind of went through all of these groups. Uh, and of course, really hitting big with the Americans in the 1700s late 1780s into 1790s. So what are the key ideas of a republic? Okay, because there are lots of different formats and we'll be, we'll be talking about that. Uh, most importantly is power is in the hands of the people um, and that is because of the voting for representatives. So understand that most modern day quote unquote democracies are republics. Okay. And there is a key difference there. So with a democracy, the idea that anyone who is quote unquote, a citizen takes an active part in the government, in decision-making in the government. Um, you think of ancient Athens is probably the greatest example of that. However, 
That's not what really we have in the world today. We have representative democracies or republics, okay? Now, the power is in the hands of the people because what you do is you vote for representatives to craft laws and, you know, run your local up to your national government. And voting in general is really the big thing here. And this is what is referred to as suffrage. And we typically measure freedoms in a nation in which you have unlimited suffrage. Uh, there have been various movements, whether it was uh, to give, say, in the United States was to end slavery and give African-American males the right to vote. And then, of course, you have women's suffrage in which women can have the right to vote. Depends on where you're at is the age in which um, someone can vote. Okay, of course, here in the United States of America, that is 18. Um, voting in general, there are also uh, different types of requirements that you have, and sometimes that can vary state by state. Typically, you have a you know a baseline voting requirement, which is the age of 18 in many places, but then depending on the country that you're in, that can be a little bit different. And that's also some stuff we'll get into in class, and that's some things that you can look up as well. Um, you also have enumerated rights, and what I mean by enumerated rights, and this is not always just for republics, in other words, the specific rights of people are uh, laid out, of course, most famously in the United States Bill of Rights, um, and not, or the English Bill of Rights as well, but you also have provisions and constitutions that basically say, okay, if the federal government doesn't, if it's, you know, if the right isn't given to the federal government or given to a state government, that right resides in the hands of people. Now, these, again, can often be regulated in a variety of different ways, different laws. Uh, it depends on where you're at in certain countries. Some countries you can do some things, other countries you cannot. But in general, the rights that people have are enumerated and they are written down. And this is very important because then they can be protected it. That's crucial. Um, many republics are confederations. Actually, the United States uh, was a confederation because we have all those different states, right? You know, the United, you know, New Jersey, where I'm at, and Georgia, and Texas, and Idaho, and California, and Illinois, and New York, and all the different states. Um, you often get a confederation that comes together, uh, or you can have similar types of things with um, states that will come together. The United Arab Emirates is kind of one of those. They're kind of individual, but then they come together, uh, but they're a little bit more on the monarchical side, but still that concept of confederations. And most of these areas do have branches of government, okay, specific branches of government in, in which uh, the most famous typically your legislative, executive, and judicial, but the idea is that you don't have all of the power in one spot. Of course, the United States, you know, the uh, legislature makes laws, but the executive has to approve the laws and then enforce the laws, and then the court system determines the fairness of the laws or the constitutionality of them, and so you have that nice balance there, which is really, really important. And that's just really, you know, the summary of a republic. And I'll be talking about more things in class, but that should give you just a basic sense of these are the things that we see if we're in a republic. Now, we also can have a oligarchy. An oligarchy is when you have a small group of leaders. And on the right, I have some different in, you know, some different interpretations of that. Uh, so you have the rule by a few. In some places, it could be an aristocracy in which you have a group of nobles that were running a show. Sometimes you look at plutocracies in which the very wealthy uh, often run things either in front of or behind the scenes, as well as the military. And it really depends on who you ask, as I jumped down. It depends on who you ask is, is the interpretation of that. Some people would say that uh, you know, the United States is really just run by the wealthy and, and because they can determine this, this, and the other thing. And, you know, an, ol an oligarchical system is very, I don't even think that's a word, but we'll run with it. Um, it. It's a very fluid situation. Some places that we see today, you often see military juntas. So a junta, so a coup is often when the military takes over the, takes over the government, right? But 
Then the question is like, who's in charge after that? Is it just one person? Did they put in a new government? Or is it basically the command structure of the military running the show? And so in places like Sudan, Egypt, Algeria, Argentina, Myanmar, these are places where we have actually seen that happen. Um, you can still see that in Sudan and in um, Myanmar today. Some people would argue that's exactly what you still have in Egypt. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get into the Middle East. Uh, communist Russia was a great example of the past because yes, people did vote, but they voted for one party. And really it was the Politburo, which was a small group of bureaucrats that ran everything. And they were the ones in charge. Uh, and in many ways, you are also seeing that with the communist Russia. And we'll be actively talking about Russia a lot this year. Uh, that's going to be a little bit later on. But when you look at communist Russia, you can also argue the same thing, that even though they have elections, you're really only voting for one party, and it's just select party members that are really running the show. And so oligarchies are a little bit weird. A lot of people think it's like, oh, it's an elected like uh, committee. And that's not kind of how it works. And it depends on where you're at to see how these develop. All right, so that should give you a good sense of the first two. My next video, I'll be getting more into autocracy. So hope you, hopefully you, you learned a little bit about some stuff here. And I will see you guys soon. So take care and thanks for watching.